Hi, welcome to the Vue.js 0-60 tutorial, where we go through a brief description on what Vue.js is, what's different about it, why you should learn it, and then implement a project that uses most of the features of Vue that you'll need most of the time, aka the essentials. Now, what is Vue? Vue is a front-end JavaScript framework for creating component-based single-page applications. Like the other major players, Angular and React, we can use Vue to write interactive components, each with their data, logic, and markup, and link them together to create full web applications. Multiple components make up a page, and components can be nested within each other for more modularity and separation of concerns. They can communicate data up and down the component hierarchy, either locally, using props and events, or globally, using an application-wide state. Components can also share logic stored in dedicated files known as services. Considering that most Vue developers are people that migrate from Angular and React, I'll assume you have some knowledge on what a front-end framework is, so I'll focus on what makes Vue stand out from the others. Vue is considered to be a framework. Straight out of the box, it has more features than something like React. Not to diss React in any way, it's actually my favorite out of the three, but I think with official complementary libraries like Vue Router for routing, Vuex for state management, and the Vue CLI, it provides a better ecosystem especially for beginners. Although it has less tools than Angular, but that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it depends on the type of project that you're working on, Angular is more suited to complete bigger applications. Vue has the easiest learning curve out of the three. Unlike Angular, which is a great framework, but has terrible documentation in my opinion, Vue actually has amazing documentation, explaining all of its features with examples that are simple and easy to understand and apply and it provides great template syntax that allows you to use your existing HTML and CSS skills while giving you access to great directives that let you write your markup in a really expressive and concise manner. What I think makes Vue shine is the simplicity of it. It's fairly easy to learn. You don't have to learn many new things, like TypeScript in Angular or JSX in React. Although you can use JSX in Vue if you wanted, provided you add the Babel plugin that compiles it. Vue has brilliant DevTools, by far better than Angular Augury or React DevTools. It even shows information about Vuex in the same extension tab, whereas for React and Redux, you have to use two separate extensions for them. The Vue CLI lets you pick and choose the features you want to use in your project before creating it, and it allows you to create certain presets for your projects if you wanted to. To create Vue apps, you need to install the Vue CLI using either npm or yarn. I'll repeat what I said in the Angular tutorial, that you need solid JavaScript knowledge. You have to understand how to use fundamental language features like data structures, loops and conditional expressions, async features like callbacks and promises, higher order functions like map, filter and sort, and be comfortable writing JavaScript in general. Seriously, if you're not yet familiar using JavaScript, then do not learn a JavaScript framework yet. However, if you feel that your JavaScript is decent, then this tutorial is for you. All right, enough of the theory and let's jump to the code. All right, I just wanted to mention quickly that for this tutorial, we're gonna be using this API that I created a while ago as part of the AWS Lambda and the DynamoDB tutorial that I made on this channel. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that. Uh, if not, you can just follow along. I'll post as well the uh, base URL of the API that you can so you can use it along. Uh, it's a simple CRUD API. So as you can see, if I send a GET request to this um, URL uh, and to slash posts, it gets me a, a list of posts sorted by created at. And if I send a post request to the slash post route and just say, uh, I don't know, just some gibberish and hit send, it will actually persist this post on the database. And then I can take this ID as well and send a put request to the um, slash post slash the ID of that post and edit it. And let's say edited here and say edit it here and I'll send and it will actually edit that post. There's a problem here it's because of the white space yeah you will actually edit that post and then give me back that post you can actually we can as well delete and we can do uh, slash post slash any number and you will limit the number of posts by that number so we did four now we got four all right so it's identical to the json placeholder api uh, except in this one the data actually persists and in the json uh, placeholder it doesn't you can use that uh, as well if you want all right so here on my desktop 
I would usually use the uh, git bash tool, but because of the interactive mode, um, there's um, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to use a traditional command line. I'm going to see the into my desktop and here, uh, make sure you have the view CLI installed. You can check by running um, view dash dash version like this. And I have 3.5 installed, so I have it installed. And now I can do view create and let's call this uh, view dash starter. And now the CLI tool is going to uh, ask me to choose a preset. Usually I would go with the default, but I just want to show you the other option. So you can manually select uh, features. I would usually pick the CSS process, uh, preprocessors because I prefer using SAS. And uh, I would maybe put the router, but I want to show you how to set it up yourself and not have it um, boilerplated. I'm just going to press enter here. You can press space if you want to select any of these features. I'm just going to press enter for now. Uh, I'm going to select this ESLint error prevention and say uh, lint on save. And here asks you where you want this uh, Babel configuration and the other config to go. I want to, I want it to go in dedicated files because otherwise it's going to make the package JSON bloated. Here it's going to ask me if I want to save this preset. I'm going to say no. And now it's going to actually install the packages and uh, create a boilerplate for our project. This is going to take a while. So I'll be back once it's done. All right, now that it's done installing, we can CD into it. So let's say CD view starter. And here I'll open it using VS code. So just run code dot. Let me close this window. So this is our project. So we get a couple of config files and we get a package JSON file. And here we have a couple of scripts. Our main one that we'll be using is the serve to just serve it. And then later we'll use build to build it out. And here we have our dependencies or the view and our couple of dev dependencies, nothing fancy. So if you open up a, the source folder right here, we have our main JS. So here we're importing view and then we are initiate initializing a new view instance and telling it to mount our app in instead of the div with the ID app. So if you go to the public folder to the index HTML, this is where our app will go. This div right here will be replaced by our application. So here I'll just change the title, just showing you, you can change the title here. Let's say view uh, tutorial. And here, let's go back to the source and inside the source, let's go to the app.view file. I'll save this. And all the uh, view components are .view files. And you can, in VS code, you can install this um, extension called Vitor, right? This one. And it will properly uh, highlight your syntax, your dot view syntax, so that you can, you know, actually write these files. Otherwise, they will be all in one color. So here, this is our main app. Right here, you can see we have a div, and inside of here, we're using another component called Hello World that comes already created, which is right here in the components folder. And we can use components by uh, just importing them and adding them to this components um, object. And then here, just using that tag, that select a tag. And every view uh, component has a template um, tag. This is where our, you know, markup goes, our HTML markup. And we have a script tag where our logic goes, our JavaScript logic. And we optionally have a, a style tag to um, style this component. This can be global and it can be local as well. If you add the scoped directive to it, it will only apply to this component. All right, let's change a couple of things. I'm actually going to delete this hello world and let's delete all of this right here. I'll just put a header two for now saying app. I'm going to remove this import because this file no longer exists and I'm going to remove this components object and remove this styling and let's actually start our app. I'll open the command line terminal and say npm run serve. All right, now that it's compiled and running, we can uh, control click on here and it's serving on localhost 8080. So this is our app. It just says app right now, nothing much. Uh, let's actually install materialize. Uh, for this, I'm going to use materialize and uh, we can, you can later use something like Vuetify, but for now I just want to use the CSS library to implement Google material design styling. So we can go to get started on the materializecss.com page. And here I'll just grab this command copy it and let's go to the terminal. I'm going to open a different window and paste that command. And on top of materialize, I want to install the view router right now. So we can set up some routes, view router. 
and um, I'm just I'm gonna create two components I mean two pages the about page and the home page the about page is just created just for me to demonstrate to you how the uh, router works so I'm gonna create them while uh, the router is being installed here we create a folder I'll call this uh, views because this is a convention in view that you would your pages will go into the views folder and your components that make up your page will go to the components folder so here in the views folder I'll create a new file actually new file I'll call this home dot view like this I'm gonna create another one not a folder a file call this about dot view and here in the components, I'm going to create two new files. One is navbar.view, and the other one we'll use later. I'll call this post form view. All right, I'll close everything, and uh, let's actually go to the documentation. Go to components. I want to put a navbar on top of our page. So here, let's go to navbar, and just grab this nav tag right here. Let's go back to our project. And here in the navbar.view, we need to say template, press tab, and inside of the template, we paste this. Um, so this is now our component. We don't need to have a script or a style. And here, this is our navbar. I'm going to change the logo uh, title to view uh, tutorial. tutorial. And here, I'll remove one of these links and leave just two. One will say home, and one will say about. And for now, I'm going to leave these hrefs as a uh, hash, but when we implement the router, this, these are actually going to go uh, somewhere. So let's actually use this component. So here in the app, let's import it first. So in the script, I'm going to say import navbar from, and from the same level, components slash navbar. I'm actually going to close the terminal window. And here inside of the our export tag here, inside of our, our script, we need to actually add again that components object. And inside of that object, we give it all the components that we want to use. And for now, it's just going to be the navbar. One thing, actually, I forgot to import uh, materialize CSS. So let's do that. So here in our app, we can you can as well import it in the index HTML, but I prefer doing it in the app um, uh, view file. All right, so here we'll say import. And we go back one level. And we go to node underscore modules, oops, modules, slash materialize dash CSS slash dist slash CSS slash materialize dash, um, actually no dash, just materialize dot min dot CSS. I'm going to copy all of this and paste it one more time. And now we need the JavaScript. So here we'll say JavaScript. And here we'll say materialize.js. Actually, you know, min.js. All right, so let's save everything and make sure there's no errors. There isn't. Let's go to our app right here. Let's refresh it. For some reason, the navbar is not working. All right, there's no errors, but oh, <laughs> I forgot to actually put it in the template. So here we'll say uh, navbar like this, self closing tag. Actually, everything needs to be under one component in the template. So I'll just wrap everything in a div. And here I'll say navbar and that header to uh, app. And we can see we have our navbar. It has two links, but these links don't go anywhere yet. And we have our app header. Actually, I want these buttons to come a bit inside, like um, closer to the middle. So here in the navbar view, I'm going to wrap everything inside of here in a container. So I'll say div the class of container, which is a materialized class. So here, so it's up to here, all of this uh, UL, actually not the UL, this whole, yeah, actually until here, I confused myself for a second. <laughs> so here we close that div, we save it formats. And if we go back to our app, there we go, we get our buttons pushed a bit in. All right, let's go back to the app view. Let's set up our router so that we can um, go to our about and home pages. So we can actually put all of the code of the router here, but maybe you'll have a lot of routes, so it's better to separate it into its own file. So here in the source folder, I'm going to create a new file, call it router.js. And here I'll import a couple of things. So here we'll import view 
from view and I import router from you can name it anything is default is the default export from view underscore uh, dash router and here we need to import our views our pages so we'll say import actually not from import about from um, views oops views slash about dot view remember to add the dot view to every component you import because they're not JavaScript files unlike react so here we'll say I typed react import home from views slash home dot view now we need to set up our routes but first we need to tell view to use the router so we need to say view dot use and this you use to um, tell view to use any of the plugins that you want so here our plugin is the actual router so we'll just say this and here we need to export our router we'll say export default new router and this takes a couple of options and here we'll say mode and we'll give it a value of history because otherwise uh, the default is the hash mode which adds a hash to the uh, URL I don't like that we'll put um, mode history and here we need to set up our routes so let's say routes routes and it's gonna be an array and it's gonna have objects for each one we'll have a path so this is gonna be the home page so I'm just gonna say slash and the and we need a component and this is this will be the home component and we can have like name and some other um, uh, properties but these are the essential ones let's create another one for the about so we'll say path is slash about and component is about let's save our file uh, for the router to work we need to to, to add it here uh, in the main JS in this um, uh, instantiation call and we need to import it so let's say import router from uh, the same level router like this and here we need to pass it to this uh, new view call as the first argument and so router and put comma so now the router is actually implemented but we need to as well go to the app view and here instead of this uh, app header actually I'm gonna wrap everything in a container so dot container tab and here we need to put uh, the router view um, component or like um, selector so this will tell view that this is uh, this is where we want our um, markup from the router to go so these are our pages will go here let's put some uh, content in our pages so that we can tell the difference between them so here we'll say template and here for now I'm just gonna, gonna say header 3 of home page I'm gonna copy this and go to the about page and just say about page all right let's save everything and let's go to our app all right so now we have home in the slash if type slash we're still at home uh, we have a container everything is pushed to the middle if we click about it doesn't go to the about page oh I know why actually oh silly me yeah in the navbar <laughs> these are still like normal um, anchor tags we need to replace these with uh, router links so here instead of uh, uh, the a tag here let's uh, control D so you select both the a tags and replace this with router dash link and here instead of href it's gonna be a, a property called uh, attribute called two this is gonna be to slash and here do the same replace the anchor tag actually just oops this no select this and this and here let's say router link instead of href to hash we will go to slash about we need to replace this as well so this will be a router link and this will have a two attribute to slash and change this as well to router link all right let's save let's go to our app and now it will work so if i go to about it goes to slash about and we see the about page and the home as well and this as well is the home page all right cool now we're done with the navbar so we can close this and we're actually not gonna do anything here as well in the main and the router so we can close these and um, now let's actually start working on our home page and let's start to fetch the data from our backend and show it all show all the posts on our home page 
Uh, for this, I'm actually going to install Axios. Um, we don't have to, we can use fetch, but I prefer using Axios because it removes um, on get requests and on actually all requests, it removes that step of having to call res.json and it has some extra features that will be more in handy in, a, in bigger applications. All right, so now that we have Axios installed um, here in the home, I'm going to remove this header. I'm going to put a, a row, so let's say dot row. And here I want to show all the posts, but first we need to fetch them. So we could actually, uh, in our script here, we can fetch them here, but since we're going to need this logic shared between components, potentially, so we could um, abstract all of the uh, data manipulation in one uh, file and make it into a service. So here in the source folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this post service js and like the in the angular tutorial we put everything in the service we'll do the same here so we'll put uh near, here we need to import ax axios so import axios oops axios from axios and uh, here we need to put our uh, um our base url um constant so it will say const base or api base url uh, this is in the description. I'm going to grab this from the side and paste it here. All right. So here we'll say export. Oops, export default. And this is going to be a class and we'll call this post service. And here we'll have our uh, methods or uh, here we'll have the first method will be getting all posts. Let's call this get all posts. And it won't take anything and it will return axios dot get and here we'll pass it the um, base URL so API actually we need to concatenate on it so let's do backticks and put dollar sign curly braces and say API base URL slash posts like this so this will return the, uh, the axios promise of getting um, API base URL slash posts so that we can get it from the home page we can access that and then show the data so here in the home view file i'll create a script tag and inside of here in the default export uh, let's give this a name and say home and here inside of the script tag i'll say import we'll import that service so import post service from go back one level to post service like this and we need to, since this is a class, we need to instantiate a, an instance of it. So we'll say const post service camel case like this with the lowercase p. And we'll say equals new post service like this, call it so that we can create an instance. We can use that. And now let's actually start to create a, to bring our data. So here inside of our um, component, we'll add another property called data like this as a, oops, data like this as a function. And data, think of it as the state. Like if you if you come from React, this is basically our component state. This is where we put all our data uh, for this component. So here we'll have a, an array of posts. So we'll say posts, and it was, this will be initially an empty array, and we'll populate it with our data. So we need to populate this posts um, array uh, once our component is created. So for this, we'll use a uh, lifecycle method called created. So we'll call created like this as a function. We, you can do like this as, an, uh, as a property and then say function, but the shorthand syntax, which is more useful to just call it like this, uh, has a, like a function. And inside of here, we need, um, and by the way, this is a lifecycle. There's uh, four main methods. Uh, if you go to the uh, view documentation, there's a cool graph or diagram showing you how these methods work. There is um, first there's the created and then there's mounted and there's updated once the component is updated and then there's destroyed once it's destroyed and there is the ones that are in between them. If you come from React this is kind of similar to well not kind of actually exactly the same as component did mount, component did update and component uh, will, um, will mount etc. So in the created now we need to reach out to our service and actually uh, get our data. So here we'll actually use our this instance, uh, this post service instance, and say post service dot, and we need to call uh, this method get all 
uh, posts that we created. And this returns a promise, so we need to chain dot then. And here, when we get our result, uh, we need to actually we're not don't need a block. We just need one call, and we need to say this dot posts. Actually, let's put it in a block that we can do other stuff. So we'll say this dot posts. And now, because this post is in this class, um, any of this these data um, properties here, we refer to them with this dot, and then we put the name of that so we can access it. And unlike React, you don't need to call a this dot state. That's this dot set state or something. You can mutate them directly, and that will be done in the in in the behind the scenes, which is quite neat. I find that it, that it reduces the amount of code that we have to write. So here we'll say this dot posts equals um, because of this is Axios, our data is stored in a um, in a object called data that's inside of the response. So we'll say this dot post equals response dot data. And here I want to console our posts just to make sure that we actually got them. So let's say console dot log. Uh, actually, not post this dot post this dot this dot posts like this. And of course, this can fail, so we'll need to say dot catch error. And if we have an error, we need to console dot error that error. All right, let's save everything. Let's make sure it compiles successfully. Let's go to it. Should I open another one? So here, uh, there's an error. Data function should return an object. Yeah, okay, yeah. Inside of the data here, we need to return an object. So let me cut this. We need to say return. Yeah, so inside of this object, we say uh, post like this. Yeah, this should fix it. All right, we have another error. No, we don't actually. So we have our data right here. Oops, my voice is cracking. <laughs> All right, so we have our data. This is the latest post that we added earlier, the edited one, and we have all the other posts. Cool, so we're actually getting our data successfully. L let's now actually show it in the markup. Let me actually close this terminal window. It's taking unnecessary space. So here inside of this row, I'm gonna say uh, create another div. So dot call, which is a column dot s six, which means it will take half of the screen width. Um, so here, in the in here, what I want to put is I want to put for each post, I want to put a card with all the the data that relates to that post. So here we'll say uh, dot card, oops dot card like this. But we need to tell view that we want to iterate through our posts array, and for each one we need to show this card. So inside of this div right here. We uh, not inside the div, inside of the uh, the attributes of the div. We need to put this directive called v four colon, and then uh, actually not colon equals. And now we give it the um, expression that tells it to loop in in whatever uh, array we want it to loop through. So here we want it to loop in posts, and here actually we can access. Uh, so we do parentheses and say post and I want I want the index as well because we need it like this and say in posts and now it knows that this posts is this posts right here and it's given us a red squiggly because we need to uh, give it a key a unique key just like um, just like if you worked with react each um, element in an iterator needs a unique key so here um, actually we need to bind another property so here we'll use another directive uh, directive called vbind and this is what you use to um, bind any value from the component to some data in in the markup or to pass it as a prop to a component so here i say vbind colon say item equals and i want to bind it to the post so that it knows uh, what the item of this div is and here we want to bind another property. And by the way, there's a shorthand um, shorthand notation for v bind. It's just colon like this. So uh, let's say colon uh, index right here, the property of uh, index. And I'm gonna give it the index. This is why I obtained I got it from here. So we'll just say index like this. And now we need to bind the key. So we'll say colon key equals. It will be uh, post.id because I know we have IDs for each post and they are unique, so we can use that. All right, so now for each post in our post, it's going to create this. Of course, we, we need to put more stuff here. <laughs> so inside of the card, we need to put a card uh, dot um, hash content, not hash uh, dash. And this is, by the way, this is materialized stuff. And here I want to put the, the title first. 
I'm gonna call uh, it's gonna be a paragraph so paragraph with a class card title and inside of here now we want to access the title property inside of post and put it here and for this we're gonna use a string interpolation kind of like angular if you've used it this is what I like about react actually um, about view rather it's got some really cool features from angular and really cool features from react and it merges both of them so here we'll say post dot title and this is a string interpolation, but as well, you can have like JavaScript expressions here. You can have um, anything you can put. If I do like this, for example, I don't know, to uppercase, and it will actually turn into uppercase. So you can write JavaScript inside of here, but it's better to write it inside of the script tag. All right, so let's put uh, the created ad date. So here I'm gonna say p.time stamp, because I know I'm gonna style this later. And here I'll put post dot created at like this. And let's put the body of the post. So here we'll have a normal paragraph. And here we'll put a string interpolation. So double curly braces. And we say post dot body like this. And after the content, I want to add another section dot card action. And here I'll put two buttons, one to edit the post and one to delete the post. Of course, they're not going to do anything right now, but we'll just put them as dummy buttons for now. So here, this link will go nowhere. We're just going to have a hash for an href, and here uh, we'll have we'll have it say edit. I'm going to copy this, and here put it and have it say delete. That's um, I'm going to give this a class because I want to make this red class of delete btn like this. Let's go down to the script tag and style this uh, delete button, uh, the style tag, which we don't have. So let's say style and uh, let's add here scoped because we don't need these styles outside and we can just scope them to this component. And here I'll say dot delete, oops, delete uh, dash button. And for that, I'm going to give it a color of red and save everything. And let's go to our app. And there we go. So we get our data, we get all our posts, each of them has its own card. And we have these, uh, the, like this, the title, the created ad and the body of the post. But this button is not red, actually. So let me inspect it. That's not applying, because we need to be more specific. So a card, a card action, but actually, I don't want to style the other one red as well. But actually, I'm just going to say important for now. Important. Let's save. Let's go back. Yeah, it's red now. So yeah, I wanna I wanna put this uh, date closer to the title and put this body a bit further away and make this date gray so that it doesn't attract too much attention. So here inside of the style, uh, where is it? It's card title. So here I'll say dot card dot card content dot card uh, title and I'm gonna give this a margin bottom of zero and here I'm gonna just copy this and here instead of card title I'm gonna have the paragraph dot time stamp and this will have a color of a gray color hash 999 and a margin bottom of say 10 pixels let's save let's go back cool this looks uh, much better all right let's go back to our app let's now add a form for um, adding posts so here at the top of our um, template here let's create another row so dot <coughs> dot row and inside of here i'll put oh actually Everything here needs to wrap to be wrapped in one component. So I'll put div. I'll copy the um, the closing tag, and underneath here we'll put it like that. So now it's not compa complaining anymore. So inside of this row, I'm gonna put a call um, s6 like this, and here this is where our form goes. So I can just like, put a comment and say form. Um, we could actually put our form here, but it's better to put it in its own component So we'll have two smaller components instead of one big one. But yeah, of course we already created that component. I forgot So here I'll say post um, post form like this and close the tag and 
let's import that component. So here we need to say import post form from, we go back one level and we go into components and we get post form. All right, and we need to as well declare it in the components array here. So we need to say, or components object, here inside of that object, we need to say post uh, form. And actually here we need to say dot view, forgot that. All right, we need to put a comma here. And now let's go to that post form and actually create this form. So here we'll say template. And by the way, using Vitor, uh, Vitor or whatever, we can say scaffold and it will create, create all of this, which is cool. So inside the template, we need our form. So we'll say form, and this will not have an action. Uh, but uh, the way I want it to, to be is that uh, I want to have later um, a Boolean variable of uh, lo loading. And if it's not loading, it will show the form. And if it's loading, I want it to show like later a, lo a loading spinner. So I'll give this a directive called v if, and this takes a condition. And if this condition is true, it will render this component. If it's not, or not component, I mean this element. If it's not, it's not going to render it. And um, there's a different component. Uh, there's a different directive called v show, which is different. Which is gonna if it's if it's false, it's not. It's gonna have it, but with a display of false. So we're gonna use v if. And we'll say if not loading, which we haven't created yet, but we will. I'm gonna give this a class of form to style it later. And here we want to give it the on sub uh, the submit event. So here we'll say um, we'll use another directive called v on, and this will take a uh, an event. So the event will be the submit event, and we need to give it actually what the method will execute on when this event happens. And we'll call this on submit and we'll create this in a bit. And here we'll say, uh, we'll put our first input, so dot input field. And again, this is materialized CSS classes. Here we'll have, we'll have two, um, two inputs, one for the title of the post and one for the body. So here we'll have a label for title and it will say title like this. And we'll have a, an input and this will be of type text. And we're going to have a couple of things here. So I'm going to indent like this. And here, what I want to do is I want to give it a name, call it title. And now we want to bind this input to a value in our component, uh, in our state. And to do this, we need to say V model is directive. And this is a, a two way binding. So if the input changes, the variable inside of our component changes. And if that variable value changes, the input value as well changes. So it's a two way binding. So here we'll say title, this is our V model. And we need to give this a, a class, oops, class of uh, validate. So that we will have a, a helper text underneath it. And if there's an error or there's a valid state, it will show that uh, help, helper text. So here we'll say span with class of helper dash text. And here we'll have a property called data error or attribute data error. And this is in case we have an error, this will show in red and it will show the text that's, that's written inside of this attribute. So for the title that our error text will say title must not be empty because that's what we're handling it to be an empty. So let's close this tag, so span. And th so this by default will not show unless this input has the class of invalid. Uh, and we'll do the validation ourselves. So here I'll copy this whole div, this uh, input field, and paste it. And we'll have here the body, so body, label is for the body, the, the name, um, the text on the label will say body, the type is text, the name is body, the V model as well is body, and the error here will say body must not be empty. And here we need to add the submit button. So here we'll have a uh, button, oops, button with the type of submit like this, press tab. And here we need to give it a couple of classes to have um, styling. I'm gonna give it the waves effect class and waves light and BTN. And here it will say uh, add. All right, so that's our markup. Now um, let's go to our script. 
Here we'll give this a name, so name, and the value will be um, post form. And here we need our data, so data is a function like this, and we say return, and we return this object. So what do we have? We have the loading, we have, and our two models, title and body. So loading, which by default will be false, and we'll have our title, which by default initially will be an empty string, and the body initially will be an empty string as well. Uh, now let's actually handle the submission. Or actually, let's let's see our what our form looks like first, and then see from there. Right? There's no errors. Saved all files. Let's go to our app. Yeah. All right. So our form looks cool. I want to actually give it some margin so that it's pressed a bit to the middle. So here, let's go to our file. Here in the style, we'll say form, and we give it a margin of 50 pixels. Let's save. All right, it looks better like this. Let's open up the dev tools, make sure that there's no errors. Actually, there is. Yeah, it just complains that we don't have the on submit uh, method because we actually don't yet. So let's create it. Uh, inside of our components, uh, our custom methods uh, are kept inside of our one object called methods. So we say methods like this. And now here we can put all the methods that we want for our component. Of course, now we need to create the on submit method. And here we can pass it an event uh, and we can say event.prevent default so that the, the page doesn't reload. But we can also use uh, these things called modifiers. So right here on submit, we can say dot and chain modifiers, which uh, do certain things on each event. And one modifier for the submit event is the prevent, which by default, prevent, uh, by default runs event.prevent default without us having to type that in our code. And by the way, shorthand notation for v on would be the at. So this um, oops, at submit, and this will work as well. And it gives you some cool intelligence on what events that you can use if you press control space. All right, so let's go here in our on submit. Now let's handle the submission. And here we'll say first thing this dot loading equals true, because now we're going to communicate to our server. And um, let's not worry about validation for now. Let's try to um, send this post to our server. But first, we need to actually create that method in the post service. So here in the post service, I'm going to create a method called write post, which will actually handle both the post and the put requests. It will take a post. And here it will say if post.id. Um, so the way this write post, I put it to work, is that we send it a post, and if the post has an ID, that means we are editing this post because this post already exists and has an ID. But if it doesn't, that means this is a new post. So I actually use the post um, uh, the post method at slash post and, and create a new post. So here, if it has an ID, we're actually editing a post. So we want to say return axios, oops, axios dot put. And this will be to, so we do backticks. Um, we put we need to put our API base URL. Well, actually, instead of putting it all the time, we could. Um, what can we do? Actually, what we can do is we can say here we can say Axios dot defaults, oops defaults like this dot base URL equals, and we give it this URL. And each time we do an Axios. Uh, request, we send an HTTP request through Axios, it's going to use this as the base URL. So here in the get, actually, we need to get rid of this. We no longer need that. We can just say to slash posts. And this can be just a normal, you know, doesn't have to be backticks. And here we'll say, so we remove that base URL. We don't need that. And we'll say it will be to slash post slash. And here we'll do a variable and we'll say post dot ID. So this is a put request, so it needs a body, and the body will be the post itself. Else, if it doesn't have an ID, so we're creating a new post. So we're here, we're here we'll say return axios.post, and this will be to slash post, and you will have the post itself as the body of the request. 
Well, while we're here, let's actually create the other methods and not open this file again. Here, I'll put another method called getPosts, which gets a post with a limit, so a number of posts. So here we'll say, uh, we need to pass it the number of posts. And here we'll say return. If you remember from the API, we need to send a request to slash posts slash a number. So axios.get um, backticks slash posts slash dollar sign curly brace. And we put that number argument right here. And we have one, oops, we have one more to create, which is the delete post, which will take an ID of a post and, and send a request to delete it. So we'll say return axios.delete. And this will be to slash, so curly um, backticks slash posts, not post actually, just post slash post. And here we put a variable that ID. All right, so we're done with the post service. We can save this and close it forever. <laughs> and here in our submit, we need to reach this um, write post and send this post. And actually first we need to import the service. So here we'll say import post service from, we go back one level to post service. And we need to instantiate uh, an instance of it. So we'll say, uh, const post service equals new post ser oops service service like this and here let's form our post so we'll say const oops const post equals and this will be um, we'll have a title which will be uh, remember this this v model binds the the value of the input here to the mod, uh, to the data here in our state or in our data and if it changes this changes as well automatically so we can just give the values of these once the form is submitted so the title will be this dot title and the body will be this dot body body like this and now we actually send our request so let's say post service dot uh, what is it right write post cool intelligence right there and we pass it the post and here we'll say dot then because that returns an axios promise and then if we get a response then um let's get our post from that response so oh yeah that, a response um we can just console log it for now so let's console dot log uh, our res dot data and we need to say dot catch as well in case there's an error somehow. And we'll say console dot error dot error. All right, let's save. Make sure we don't have any errors. We don't. Cool. All right, let's go to our app. Let's open the console. Okay, there are a couple of errors. Or this refresh, maybe not. Yeah, they were from last time. All right, so here we need to type. Let's say, I don't know, new post. Oops. New post from view and view is really cool all right let's click add so the form goes away oh it's because of the loading that's why it goes away all right so we get this from our server that a post is created we get an id and everything but of course it's not added because we haven't added the logic to add it here so let's refresh there we go when we refresh we get the new data updated and we get our post Let's fix that the form goes away. So here, once we get the data back, we need to set the loading to false. So we'll get our this lo dot loading equals false so that we get our form back. So let's go to our app, refresh, and let's put some gibberish, click add. Cool, it comes back, but it's still got the values. If we refresh, we get, we get that gibberish which submitted. Cool. But uh, we need to reset the form once it's submitted, actually. And the way we can do that, we can just reset our data. So here we'll say this dot body. So this dot body equals an empty string again. And this dot title equals an empty string. And when the form goes away, uh, I want to put the uh, loading, the, uh, the loading thing. I don't know how you call it. <laughs> Where is it? It's right. Yeah, the preloader. Yeah, this uh, indeterminate, what is it, a progress bar, I guess. Yeah, so I'll just copy this. And 
let's go to the bottom here under our form we'll put that put that here and instead of saying v if we can use another directive v uh, else if and we'll pass it the loading you can use v if as well here but um, v else if works with this one as well so it doesn't trigger both of them so it's better for performance it's a tiny bit but whatever so if we're loading we need we're gonna see this now and our form should reset because we reset those values to an empty string so let's go to our app let me close everything here let's reload and if i send some gibberish again we see that loading for a second and the form is back and the form is reset to no data cool uh, i want to style this actually and by the way we can open and if you want to see that because the loading is too fast you want to see the loading uh, bar and style it we can go uh where is the view developer tools okay i don't have it installed on somehow okay view dev tools need to install that so add to chrome i thought i had it okay i had to restart chrome for the extension to actually work so this is the dev tools which is pretty cool we see our component tree right here so our app and this is our home component and we can see our data right here so this is all our posts and um so if we dig deeper into the post form we can see the loading we can set this to true so true and we'll get that bar back all right so i want this bar to actually be centered in the, in the middle a little bit so i'll give it some margin so let's go back to our post form and here in the script uh, in the style i'm going to target the uh progress class so dot progress and give it some margin so uh, I'll give it margin on the top and bottom of 100 and on left and right of zero. So let's save. Let's go back. There we go. So styled properly now. If we go to the dev tools again and put the loading again to true, we see that loading bar is in the middle. All right, cool. Let's now, uh, what do we do now? Uh, let's put, uh, yeah, let's validate our form in case, because if now, right now, if we have empty fields and we hit send, it actually attempts to send, even though there will be errors because there will be server validation errors. All right, let's go here. Uh, instead of putting everything in the unsubmit, let's create a separate um, method for this. Uh, inside of methods, I'm going to create another one called valid form. And here, uh, what I want to do, I'm going to say, actually, I'm going to add another um, another variable, state variable here called errors, oops, errors, and it's going to be an empty object for now. And here I'll say this dot errors equals an empty object. Um, here we'll say this. Now I know this looks weird that I'm doing this again, given an empty uh, object value again, but this works is that, because the way this works is that if another error if we lose an error i want to reset it whenever we check again so that we don't see an error even though a field is valid i don't know if that makes sense but it does work all right so here i'll check the fields so first i'll check the title and we need to uh, chain dot trim so that it removes the white spaces so here i'll say if title dot trim uh, equals an empty string then we need to add an error so we'll say this dot oops like this this dot errors dot uh, title equals and we'll say uh, title actually I don't think the errors matter yeah because um, it doesn't matter I think because this will show instead of this all right to test I'm just gonna say title here so in here I'm gonna say if this dot uh, body dot trim equals an empty string and so here we'll say this dot errors dot body equals I'm just gonna say body for now I don't think these texts matter it's just uh, just the fact that they have a value matters and here I want to say if object dot keys and pass it this dot errors and, dot, and chain dot length so if the length of this array or object rather of uh, the number of keys is bigger than zero that means we have some errors so we return false that means our form is not valid else uh, return return true 
Else if we don't have any errors, that means the, the form is valid, so return true. So here at the top of the onSubmit, what we need to say is, after the loading, we need to say if, and we, need, we can access this method again by saying this dot. So here we'll say if this dot valid form, so, and we call it like that as because it's a method, we say this, that loading equals false, and we'll say return. So it stops, it doesn't carry on. Else we continue. Or actually no, if this dot valid, or if not this dot valid form, because uh, if it's valid, we actually want to do the rest. If it's not valid, we stop loading and we return. That means none of this executes. All right, so let's save. And let's see, okay, so the fields are empty. Click add. All right, so we don't get the errors. The form doesn't submit, but we don't get the errors. Interesting. Well, actually, yeah, what am I saying? I need to give these, because um, the way it works, if I inspect this, so this input, if I change the class of the input to invalid, oops, invalid, the, oh my God, invalid. <laughs> All right, so this will show now. All right, so if I save, you see that span is now visible and you see that error, that uh, title must not be empty. All right, so actually we need to change the class in case we have an error. So here in the class, we can do uh, some binding. And here for the class, it's gonna be actually a bound property. So we add a colon in front of it. And here it's gonna be um, like an expression like this. So we put uh, square braces, square brackets, and here we'll say errors dot title. So this is a, a ternary operator. So if this is the case, so question mark. So if we have errors dot title, then this should be um, invalid. This should have the class of invalid. Let me make this uh, wrap around. Else, so colon, else if we don't have, then it should just have a, the class of validate. All right, so let's copy this uh, class and go here for the other input here for the body, so if we have errors.body, then we set it to invalid, else it's uh, validate. All right, let's save and let's go back. Let's refresh. And now if I submit, I should get errors for both of them. All right, so submit, there we go, we get errors. So if I put some gibberish here and click add, there we go. So that error is gone, but we still need to put this. If I put some gibberish here as well, click add, it's added. But of course we're not adding it here because if we we have to refresh and see our data. Now we can as well call um, again get um, get posts, but that's not efficient because that way we send two requests to our server. So what we need to do, we need to send this post using view and just add it manually in our front end. All right, so let's go to our app here. So here, once it's submitted, we want to send um, an event that this um, once it's successful, we want to send an event and communicate to the home page that you need to add this post to your posts uh, array right here. So here we'll use an API uh, method called so we'll do this dot dollar um, dollar sign and we have access to a couple of methods um, and namespaces given by view and we'll use uh, the emit one and this uh, here we need to pass it the event name so the event name um, I'll call it uh, what post created because remember that here we're in the uh, dot then block that means the post has been created successfully and now we need to pass uh, some data which is going to be the post so now we need to go to our home component and we need to catch this event and handle it so here I'm gonna we can catch it from anywhere but it's more appropriate to put it in the form so here we'll say we can say v on but shorthand we can just say at so at and we need to give it the event which was called post created and now we need to tell it what to execute once once this event is um, is triggered or emitted. So here we'll say uh, we we'll call it add post. And now let's create this add post. So right here in we need to create a methods. Actually, I'm gonna put it on top of here. So methods object. Let's put a comma here. Let's create this add post method, and it will take the post because this is passed uh, through uh, calling the event. And here we'll just say this dot posts and we want to add it to the end because this is a new post. So we'll use the unshift method, the JavaScript unshift and pass it this post. All right, let's save all files. 
And so now what's happening is that when we send a post and when we send it to our server and we get a, a successful response, we emit an event called post created with this post that we have uh, formed here. And now in the home, we catch this event right here. And once that event occurs or is emitted, this add post is executed. And then this add post adds that post that was caught here to the posts array. All right, so now if we add some gibberish, new gibberish, is that how you spell gibberish? I don't know, just, just copy it here, add here. And there we go, it's actually added on our front end. And if we refresh, it's the same. That's actually, that's the data that we got from our server. Actually, is it? Oh, actually I made a mistake. We need to uh, send the post that we got back from the server because that contains the created ad. The one we have doesn't contain the created ad. So here, let's go back to our post form. So here, what we emit is actually gonna emit res.data. Or, uh, or instead, let's put that in a, let's put a const post. We already have that. Anyway, let's just send res.data, remove this console log. Yeah, this should uh, this would, should work properly now. Let's refresh. Uh, send some gibberish again. There we go. We get the, the one from the server so that we get the created ad as well. All right. Let's start to wire these buttons. So here for the right, where are the buttons? Actually, no, they're in home. So here for the buttons, for the edit, we'll say at click. So once this button is clicked, we need to trigger the, uh, so we'll call it edit post and we'll pass it this post. So remember we have this post through the for uh, directive and here for the delete, we say add click, we will trigger delete post and we'll pass it post dot ID. So here in the methods, let's create those. So the edit post, which for now I'm just gonna say console, oops, console.log post and here for the delete post, so ID, we need to reach out for to our service and delete this post. So let's say uh, post service dot delete post, and we pass it this ID, and this returns a promise. So we need to say dot then. Uh, we have no result, so we can just leave those uh, that without an argument, and. We just console console dot log post deleted. If I can type, <laughs> here we say dot catch. If you have an error, just console dot error uh, error like this. All right, let's save all of that and let's go back. Let's uh, refresh. Open up the console, and here if we press delete right here. It says post deleted. Oh, we need to remove it actually from the array, but if we refresh, that gibberish is deleted. So we can actually just delete all of these. Click on all, delete on all of them. And now they're actually all deleted. All right, but we need to actually manually remove them using view from here. So what we need to do here in the, uh, where is it, the delete post, once they've been successfully deleted from the server, uh, we need to change our post, so we need to say this dot post equals this dot posts dot filter, and here uh, the filter takes a um, what do you call it a callback, and this callback is um, we leave only um, elements with this condition, and the condition will be post where post dot id um, does not equal this id. So we only leave the ones that don't have this ID, AKA we just remove the one that has this ID. So let's save. Let's go back to our app, let's refresh. Make sure we don't have any errors, we don't. So we click delete here. Now that post is gone from the front end as well. All right, cool. So uh, before we work on the edit, I wanna add a post limiter right here, an input to uh, limit the number of posts in our page. So let's go up here in the home. So actually next to the form here, we need uh, to put another call. We'll give it S3 width. And here we'll say, we'll put some text, say limit 
number of posts. And here we'll put an input with a type of uh, number and the name. Sure, I don't think we need the name attribute. I just use it as a, it's just a habit. So here we'll say vmodel equal is, we'll call this post limit. And let's create this post limit. So here in our data, let's say post limit. I'm gonna give it a default value of five. And here let's create a method. Well, actually we need to add a button to trigger this. So here we'll say button and we we'll say add click. So once this is clicked, we need to call a method called set uh, limit like this. Let's give this a class of waves effect and waves light and btn and this will say set don't know why that tag didn't close all right let's go here let's create this set limit so set limit now we need to reach to our post service so here we'll say post service dot we need to use that get posts uh, method and we pass it the uh, post limit so this dot post oops, post limit like this this returns a promise so we say dot then and if we get when we get our response we just need to say this dot posts equals this response so response dot data and dot catch error we say console dot error error all right I think this is it let's save let's go to our app uh, I want to give this some margin as well. We're just going to use some inline styling for now. we will say style equals margin 50 pixels. Let's save. There we go. So we get our limiter. Let's say I want only two. Click set. Cool. We get only two. I want three. Oh, what is this? No. Did I click? So we click three. We get three as well. So we get the latest three. Cool. Now if we refresh, we only get all of them. And uh, of course, if we put like a massive number, what is happening? Put a massive number, we get all of them anyway. All right, so uh, I want to work on the edit now. So the way edit works is that I want to, when I click edit, I want here um, this form to be filled with the details of that post that I clicked edit. And then when we click again, add, it will um, edit that post alone. So here, we will actually pass this post um, down to our post form. So what we need to do, we need to uh, add another um, variable here, call it editing post, and we'll give it a value of null initially. And in the edit post, where is the edit post here? We just say this dot editing post equals this post that we clicked. And now we need to pass it to our form. So here we'll say uh, v model. Or, or actually just like colon shorthand syntax, call it the same editing post equals editing post. All right, so we now we pass it to our post form as a prop. So let's go to our post form. And for us to use props in view, we need to actually declare a props property. And this can be an array and you pass it the names of the props you're receiving, but preferably you put an object so that you can use uh, typing as well to um, prop typing. And you'll say, so I wanna receive editing post and this will be of type object. So this is a better practice than using the, uh, the strings in an array. So now that we're receiving this, what I wanna do is that uh, I wanna listen to changes to this editing post. So whenever this prop changes, because by default we don't have this prop. So I want to that when we get this prop, to uh, trigger that we fill the, our form with the data from that post. So here we're gonna use another um, another thing. Where are we actually, what is this? So under, so under the methods here, we use something else called watch, which watches for changes in our props. And here we can have methods which have the same name as our variables in our state. So if, for example, if I wanted to listen to changes um, in our, for our editing post prop or for the loading, for example, I would say loading and then do something. So I wanna listen to changes in the editing post prop. So I'll copy that. And here in the watch, I'll paste that. And this will take the post that we, uh, that we got passed down. 
So now this is our object. Whenever that changes, the, our, the editing post, this will get triggered. So if it changes, we need to say this dot title. So we need to put our input uh, model to be the same, uh, the data in our inputs to be the same as that post that we're trying to edit. So we'll say this dot title equals post dot title, and this dot uh, body equals uh, post dot body. All right, let's save everything and let's check if that's working. So let's refresh. If we click edit on this one, cool, we get edited, but yeah, there's, I don't know, the, the label doesn't activate once uh, if, the, if we do this. So you see, if I click on this one, it's editing this one. If I click, it's editing this one. Um, actually, let's make it so that if we're in editing mode, this changes from add to update. So, so this button uh, needs to have a conditional value here. So here we'll say, um, can we just check for this the editing? Or actually, oh, actually here I'll add another property because we need it. Actually underneath the body, I'll say ID, and this by default will be null because we need the ID when we send to write post to for it to know that we're actually editing a post and not um, and not creating one. And this here I'll say this dot ID equals post dot ID. All right. So now we know whenever the ID is null, that means we're in create mode. And if we have an ID, that means we've clicked edit and we this has been triggered and we have an ID value right here. That means we're in editing mode. So we can use this ID property for this conditional here. So here we'll say um, if uh, ID like this as a ternary operator. So if ID is not null, if it's truthy, the value of this will be update. Else the value of it will be add like this. It's a JavaScript ex expression inside of string interpolation. All right, let's save and let's check if that's working. Let's reload. So now it's add. And if I click to edit this one, it says update. Cool. Of course, those labels uh, don't go up, but whatever. All right, so now let's actually make it so that it actually updates when we send to the server. So here, so on submit, uh, we actually, we need to say, we can actually add the ID here and say equals this dot ID. And it will still work when we're creating a post because in the post service, uh, if you remember here in the post service, if it checks if post ID, and it's okay if we send this ID, if it's null, and if it's null, it's still gonna send it to the post. So that would work just fine. So nothing changes here. All right, so let's save and let's test this out. All right, let's say we wanna edit this edited and I just wanna add a bunch of these after this. I click update. All right. Okay, so that's not, ed oh, I see what's happening. So we're, because we didn't change the logic, this is actually edited, but because our logic in the um, in the home is just adding those posts whenever we receive that, because if we up if we refresh, we get that that post has been edited and it wasn't actually added as a new one. So what we need to do, um, where is it? So in the home view, where is it? Oh boy! Oh yeah, here. <laughs> we need to check if we already have that post. We just edit that post. So I'm gonna cut this. And we'll say if uh, this dot posts dot find uh, find and we need to pass this a condition so a p or post where post dot id equals post dot id of this post right here. So if this is true, that means we have this post. So we need to find this post. So we need to find the index of the post and replace the uh, replace the element at that index. So we'll say const index equals this dot posts dot find index and the the callback or the uh, this thing <laughs> is post where post id oh, equals post dot id and now that we have that index we can just say this dot posts dot splice and the way splice works is that uh, give it a start index and the start index will be this index and you give it the number of posts to remove which was just one we just want to remove that and the third one will be what you wanted to replace it with we want to replace it by this post that we got passed here else that means else if we don't have this post in that array 
that means this post is a new one. So we just paste back that thing that we say this post .unshift. So let's save. And now let's reload here. And now if we add a new post, it actually adds it right here. But if we edit an existing post, let's say I want to edit this and instead of learn view, I want to say learn view.js, we say update. It actually updates this and it doesn't add it. Cool. So our application is complete. So yeah, um, or actually wait, I want to format this. <laughs> um, I want to format this because this doesn't look good. Um, how do we do this? Uh, le yeah, let's actually add a filter. Oh, this is another feature that uh, I forgot to mention. There's this thing called filters. Uh, what we need to do is here, we can right here in, in here, we can add a JavaScript expression to, to edit this, but that's not efficient because the markup would look a bit uh, crowded. So here we'll add this pipe character. Uh, I used to call wall, but now I know it's called pipe. And this is similar to angular pipes. And here we'll say, we'll call this pipe format date. And now we need to create this filter and it will be applied to this. So here in the filters um, array or object, let's create this uh, format date filter. So let's say format date and it will take date. I can name this whatever, it's just an argument. And here we'll say, uh, I want to change the date because right now it's just a string. I want to form a date from it. We'll say new date and we'll pass it this date. And now this is a, an actual JavaScript date object. And I want to format it uh, that it will have the day, the month and the year. I don't want to go further because actually um, later on you will use something like um, moment or day JS, but let's, I want to do this without any library. So we'll say day equals date dot get date, oops, date, which will give us the number of the day. And here we'll have the month, oops, month equals date dot get month. And here we'll have a year, which will be date dot get full, oops, full year, year like this. And here we'll say return, uh, curly brace, I mean, um, backticks, day um, ha, um, hyphen or dash month and dash year. And if you're from America, you can flip this, but the month at the beginning, this is like European format. And now it will, uh, here in this filter, it will take this and then process it with that filter and return um, and put in the markup this result. All right, so let's save. So for example, let's look at this one. This is the 13th of, um, oh, it's already formatted. All right, cool. Um, yeah, let's make sure that that's the correct date. So we can go to our view, uh, where is it, view right here. We can go to our data. So here in the home, in the post, actually not in the post form, in the home, we see our data, the first post right here. All right, here it's the, it's indeed, it's the 13th of May of 2019. Wait, wait a second, this is, oh wait, I forgot. Month actually um, starts from uh, zero to 11 instead of uh, one to 12. So let's say here plus one, and that should fix it. We save and we go back here. Yeah, there we go. So now it's actually the 13th of May of 2019 right here. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from it. Um, if you're a beginner and you're like trying to figure out which framework to learn, Vue is definitely for you. Uh, I'll put a link of the GitHub repository, including all of this code in the description. And uh, please let me know if you like this video and if you have any praise or criticism or whatever. And if you like this video, like it. If you love this type of content, please subscribe and hit the like button. I mean the bell button so you don't miss any videos from me. Thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.